Mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, when God through Malachi makes an announcement to the people, it must have been so very exciting for them. The announcement was that God is coming. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come, says Malachi. Can you imagine the excitement of the people? God himself, the great King of kings and Lord of lords, the one who made the heavens and the earth, the one who is above all in every possible way, who is more wise, more powerful, more glorious, more perfect, holy in every particular way. He is the one who is coming. The great God is coming. But not only he is great in all these ways, but he's also humble and loving so that you love to have him close. He's coming, says the Lord. And uh, what a wonderful thing it must have been for them to hear that. God is coming. Imagine what it would be like if God were coming to your house. What would that be like? Let your imagination run wild a moment. What would it be like if God was coming to you? You wouldn't really have to worry much about uh, how to entertain God, all right? Uh, that's, uh, that wouldn't be it at all. You know, when, when God is in your home, there'll be a place that's filled with love, right? When God's in your home, there's so much peace. It reminds me a little bit about uh, when Mary sat at Jesus' feet, when Mary came to her, when Jesus came to Mary and, and Martha's home. And uh, Mary didn't have to entertain Jesus, did she? Just to enjoy being with him. The Lord's coming, he says. Coming for us. When, uh, when our Lord came, and came the first time, it was uh, John the Baptist who prepared the way for Jesus as he began his ministry. And... Uh, uh, the Baptist was the, the messenger. See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Um, it's it's like very much like uh, uh, what you would expect for um, a royal or a presidential arrival. Uh, these uh, great people always have to have folks who go ahead of them and get things ready. Uh, in the case of a king or a queen or a president, um, somebody has to go ahead and make sure that uh, everything's safe for both the people and uh, the dignitary who's coming. But there's also the advanced people who have to come for royalty or president. They uh, have to make sure everything's arranged, that if there needs to be a microphone or a podium or chairs and tables or however things need to be arranged, that this is all done ahead of time so that... Uh, the royalty can just walk in and things are prepared. Also, most often, the people themselves need to be prepared. And this is clearly what John the Baptist came to do. He came to prepare the way for the Lord. And the way that John the Baptist prepares for the Lord is that he tells the people to repent. That is, he tells them to turn from their sins. Because if Jesus is going to come into their hearts, the sin has to be cleaned out of there. Otherwise, there's no room for the king to come. And so John's preparation is to tell the people, turn from your sin, repent, and prepare the way for the Lord to come. We also need to prepare for the Lord to come to us in our day, don't we? And... Uh, as John described it, he says, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for him. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The crooked roads shall become straight, the rough ways smooth, and all mankind will see God's salvation. So we also in our day need to prepare for God's coming. We need to take down these mountains of sin that have been built up. We need to turn from those sins and confess it so that it can be taken away. We need to fill in the, the dark valleys of the things that we're ashamed that we have done. They need to be covered in. The 
crooked ways that we're accustomed to going need to be made straight. The uh, rocky road of our lives need to be made smooth so that when the Lord comes, he may come into our hearts and dwell within us. This is what God calls us to do. Prepare the way for the Lord. And so we do it. Because the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. When it says that the Lord will come to his temple, you think back to the day of Malachi and even to the day of John the Baptist and Jesus. And where was the temple? Jerusalem. That was headquarters for God's people and for God himself. There was God right in the temple in the very highest part of the city. But there's, there is no temple on that mountain, uh, that uh, temple mount in Jerusalem anymore. No temple there. So where does God come today? He comes to you and me. Because our bodies are the temple of God now. The Holy Spirit dwells within us and all who believe in him. And so when it says the Lord will come to his temple... He's coming to us. Of course, he's already come, hasn't he? He's already here. And yet, uh, we are still to prepare the way for the Lord, for he's coming in another way, coming again, coming on the last day. And he certainly will come. But what we read here in Malachi 3, 2 is not very encouraging. Who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he'll be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He'll sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He'll purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when God comes again? Make no mistake about it. When God comes, he comes to judge. Verse 5 makes that so clear. God says, I will come near to you for judgment. I will be quick to testify against, and then he lists all kinds of evildoers. God's coming, and he's coming for judgment. Who can stand? Who can endure his coming? Who wants to endure the refiner's fire? Terrible stuff. And we are not able to prepare ourselves for his coming. And so he himself does it. Our Lord himself prepares us for his coming so that we will be able to stand in the judgment. That's why Jesus came the first time. Born as a baby, he lived a full and perfect life for us. John the Baptist prepared the way for him as he began his public ministry, but there was nobody, not even John, who could prepare Jesus for the end of that earthly journey. Jesus uh, did what preparation could be done in the Garden of Gethsemane, praying and praying with great uh, anguish, sweating, as it were, great drops of blood, asking if it be possible that this cup be taken from me. You get the idea from that how very difficult this road was for Jesus. It's called the Via Dolorosa, the way of sorrows. Great suffering and great pain he went through as he went to the cross for us. Great suffering. And there he died. Rising again on the third day, we can't forget about that. But because he made that journey, when he comes again, we can be prepared for that. For though he comes and will come suddenly, And though he will come in judgment, he will judge righteously, justly. But that does us no good, since we're sinful people. But, because of what Jesus has done on that cross, he takes away our sin. He takes away our guilt. He prepares us for his coming by taking away all the sinful, evil, awful stuff and replacing within us his righteousness. 
And when he judges us, he will only see his righteousness in us. Oh, isn't our God so good? He will righteously, justly judge us innocent because he's made us so, because he has prepared us for his coming again. And so we are prepared for the coming of the Lord. We, we will be able to stand when he comes. We will be able to endure, for he will justly, rightly judge us as his own and bring us on that wonderful journey to heaven. Prepare the way for the Lord, Luke quotes Isaiah. But the Lord's already, way has already been prepared, and yet he still calls it to us to prepare the way for the Lord. The way that needs to be prepared now is the way for the Lord to come into the hearts of people who don't have a relationship with him. There are a number of reasons why somebody may not have a relationship with Jesus. It may be that they've never really known him. Oh, maybe they've heard about Jesus, but don't really know what he's done for them. Don't know how he loves and forgives they don't understand. They've never had a relationship. And for others, maybe they had a relationship with Jesus at one time, but have drifted away. No matter what the cause, for those who don't have a relationship with Jesus, who are not ready for him to come, God wants us to prepare the way for him to come to them. So how do you do that? You love them. You love people and love them deep, love them deeply, sincerely, really care for people, develop relationships with people. It takes time to do that, I understand, but it's so important. You develop relationships with people and they've come to know that it, you are sincere, that you really love them. And at some point, you're going to have an opportunity to let them know about Jesus. When the time's right in their lives, when they need to hear about it, because they know that you love and care about them, they'll hear from you. And the Spirit does His work. And as you tell them all the ways that God has prepared for us, think about what the Spirit will do. You can tell them about how John the Baptist prepared people for Jesus to come to them as he preached repentance, telling people to turn from their sin. You can talk to them about the path that Jesus walked all the way to the cross, how he suffered and died to pay for their sins and ours. You can proclaim to them about how Jesus has prepared the way for us, for when he comes again, and how he has prepared the way for us to come with him to everlasting life. Prepare the way for the Lord. Proclaim what great things God has done for us. Amen. And may the peace of God, peace that passes all understanding, may it safeguard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen.